My name is Eric Nibleus, and I'm a lecturer in Medieval Manuscript Studies in the Department of Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic. This means that I teach the study of early medieval books, not just texts, but the physical books themselves. Now, medieval manuscripts, they look familiar and uh, similar to modern books in many ways, but there are some key differences. The first and most obvious one is, of course, that manuscripts are copied by hand, not printed. This means that every manuscript is, in one way or another, unique. Cambridge is very lucky in that some of the world's best collections of medieval European manuscripts are housed here, in the university library and in some of the college libraries. In Asnac, we use these manuscripts for teaching and for our research, and our students have the opportunity to study and handle them. In the next couple of minutes, I'm going to show you how this can work in digital format by looking at one of these collections, that of Trinity College's Wren Library. Now, the uh, collection of manuscripts in Trinity College collect uh, contains over 850 medieval manuscripts, but uh, the Wren Digital Library makes it quite easy to, to restrict this if you're interested, for example, in a particular century. So here I've been restricted the, the Rand Digital Library to the 11th century and as you can see there are 40 results here, 40 manuscripts that you can look at and explore. Now uh, these are some of them very typical texts that you'd find in a medieval library, some of them more unusual ones. Um, one example that is of uh, interest to a lot of people interested in the department of Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic will be this copy of homilies, that is uh, sermons to be uh, read or spoken in church services uh, by uh, Alfred of Ancien. Now this is a uh, very what we call high-grade manuscript in some ways, we can see that because it's got these display features like this uh, image of uh, Jesus holding a book up at the very beginning of the manuscript, the frontispiece, um, and it's written in a quite large, clear hand, typical of uh, handwriting in England in the 11th century, as you can see here. Now, this is written in Old English uh, and um, with some of the typical letter forms for Old English, but otherwise in, uh, with many letter forms that will be familiar to modern readers and will not take very much training to uh, understand and to, to read. Now this is a very Christian book clearly and it should be said that uh, medieval manuscripts uh, are dominated by Christian books and that the people who made, copied and owned books in the Middle Ages and in particular in the early Middle Ages were overwhelmingly professional religious, that is priests, monks and nuns and in fact monks very much dominate the earliest material. That doesn't mean that all books and all manuscripts that they copied contained texts that were strictly Christian. For example, uh, here is a geometry textbook copied uh, in the 10th century in the monastery of St. Augustine's Canterbury. Another Canterbury manuscript, but not from St. Augustine's, but from the other big monastic institution in the city, uh, Christchurch Cathedral is one of the most famous medieval manuscripts in Trinity College. This is the so-called Eadwina Psalter. Um, now this is a 12th century manuscript. Um, it is a big large grand book named after uh, Eadwina whose portrait appears towards the end of the manuscript uh, covering an entire page, this very grand big portrait, unusual for a book from this period. Eadwina, we think at least, was one of the people involved in the making of the manuscript. Certainly that's what he's doing in the portrait. Here you can see how he's got the quill for writing the text and he's got a knife for scratching out uh, mistakes and errors. Clearly, however, Eadwina was not the only person involved in making this book. In fact, it is a big collective endeavour. And this is a book made not only to be read, but also to be displayed to show off the wealth and capacities of Christ Church Cathedral. Now we can see this in the text too. 
So this is a Psalter, so it's part of the Bible, uh, so very much a Christian text, but it's in fact also a very, very complex product in terms of what's in it, because it contains not only one form of the Psalter text, but five. It contains three different Latin translations of uh, the Psalter, arranged here in two smaller columns and one bigger columns. It contains uh, a commentary on the Psalter in Latin, uh, both in these paragraphs of text here in the margins, but also in the form of what we call interlinear glosses, so glosses between the lines that explicate and explain the text uh, from a Christian point of view. Of course, the Psalms are part of the Old Testament, so originally these are Jewish texts adapted uh, and translated for Christian use. Um, and then two more versions of the Psalter written again as interlinear glosses to these uh, smaller columns on the left. And you can see here that to the right we have a translation of the Psalter into Old English, and to the left we have a translation into Old French. So not only is this a book which shows us that the Canterbury skill, uh, monks were skilled in the international language of the medieval church, Latin, but also in the two languages of 12th century England, um, Old French and Old English. Now this is an illuminated or illustrated manuscript which has a large number of illustrations of scenes uh, from the Bible which uh, are done very much in a style that harmonizes very well with the rest of the book as you can see with the same colors appearing across the manuscript page. But in fact these are actually copied from a much earlier book, a 9th century uh, Psalter brought from Francia to England in an earlier period. There are, however, many features typical of the time in this manuscript for all that the illustrations are copied from an earlier one. These include not only, as I said, the, the translations into Old English and Old French, but also all sorts of marginal features little things written into the beginning of the book, the end of the book, and at the bottom and top of pages. And one of these, uh, which is lovely and, and uh, quite well known, is very early on in the book, where we have a drawing in the bottom margin of a page of what well, is a comet. And it says, it has a little caption, a little explanatory text in Old English, explaining what a comet is. And it says that in fact, a comet is a kind of star, and not just any star, but a long-haired star, a feax sedasteoram in Old English, and that this was something that uh, could predict bad news. So this book, which of course is uh, in some ways a display of Christian culture that was uh, common to medieval Western Europe in the 12th century in all sorts of ways, also contains lots of interesting little uh, tidbits of information like this one. And I think that's one of the joys of studying manuscripts and looking at manuscripts, that there's so much more than just a text. There are also these really complex repositories of information where their makers could add things, take things away, and draw things and put little things into the margin in order to create these wonderfully rich uh, products, which tell us so much about the time and place in which they were made.